Hello, welcome back to Buckle Up. My name's Jasper Bruce Wright, and this is the brand new MG3 Hybrid. And, well, move over every other Super Mini, because I think this might just be the best in class. Yes, you heard me right, I think this might just be the best Super Mini available today. And the reason for that is, it's a completely new car. The old MG3 is gone, and what we have here is a hybrid model ready for the future era. Gone is the old-fashioned, frumpy-looking styling at the front, and what you've got here is a sleek, pinched nose, a big MG badge, some great headlamp clusters, and even some kind of carbon fibre-esque elements as a front splitter. The grille is sharp, this aero styling round here is also sharp, and the crease work in the bonnet is pretty sharp. The new face on this MG3 looks a lot like the rest of the models that MG has in their range, so the corporate design language has been applied to the Super Mini. I think at the front that it looks absolutely great. Let me know what you think in the comments. I think it looks great at the side as well. We've got some absolutely lovely 16 inch diameter diamond cut finished alloy wheels. The profile is really nice and modern. You've got some creasing in it that's quite tasteful and sporty. This model has keyless entry and go and auto folding wing mirrors that have the side repeater indicator in them. You've also got 360 degree cameras under the wing mirrors. In this spot on the other side, you have your petrol fuel filler flap. And then round here at the back, it is of course all new. You've got a tinted rear screen, which matches nicely with your tinted glass in the rear windows. These light clusters are a kind of smoked red effect. They look really sharp. You've got a wiper with an integrated washer jet into the spindle. So that means that the top of this boot section actually up here looks incredibly clean, especially because your third level brake light is integrated behind the glass. Down here we've got some kind of, it's a grill effect bit of plastic, and uh, you've also got some diffuser elements under here. This is the MG3 Hybrid Plus, so it does have a petrol engine. Large MG badge here, and if we pop the boot, you'll be greeted with a suitably super mini sized boot capacity of 293 litres. If you fold the rear seats down, which is a single bench in this, that goes all the way up to 983 litres though, which is pretty practical for this size and shape of car. Within the boot there are almost no features. You do, however, have a hook for a carrier bag and a warning triangle. There are two tie-down points at the back of the boot, and then underneath the boot floor there is a bit of polystyrene which fills your spare wheel well that doesn't get a spare wheel, which has your 12 volt battery and then a can of compressed stuff to fix a tire if you get a puncture. You can store a few things under here as well though, but at the end of the day, this is a very, very value focused car. And as a result, you don't tend to get a lot of niceties, but that's not to say it's not a good interior. So let's go and check that out. Now, there's not too much to speak of back here because this is, after all, a super mini and rear passengers are not always the priority in that kind of car. However, the material on the seats is a lovely mixture of fabric and fake leather. And then I'm sitting behind a fake leather seat and my seat back has got some lovely perforated sections in it. The seats are ridiculously comfortable. The foam is very supportive. It's nice and squidgy and you do actually have a reasonable amount of space back here as long as the driver is short. So this seat is in my own driving position and I have got more than enough knee room and actually a decent chunk of headroom as well. For reference, I'm about 173 centimeters or five foot seven and a half. So in terms of actual space back here, for the outer passengers, you're pretty good. The central seat is quite small and a little bit raised, so they will struggle more for space. There's not much of a hump in the floor though, so there's at least some space for feet down here. Now, if the driver was taller and the seat was further back, my legs would kind of get to the stage where they would be a little bit 
tight for space, but that's also the case for all of this car's closest rivals. It's just a downside of this class of car. In terms of practicality, you've got a pocket on the back of both of these front seats, a single USB type A charging port here, and then a small cubby down here. The door cards have both got pockets in them which are large enough for a reusable bottle of water that holds 500 millilitres, um, but you're not really going to be getting much else in there. And um, realistically, with this size of car, what you've got back here is more than enough. Now, I absolutely love the front seats of the new MG3, and there are a few reasons for that. The first is the design. You've got some lovely, tasteful integration of checkered material into the dashboard. The actual layout of the cabin is incredibly minimalist, but really quite tasteful and modern, and you've got just about everything you need within easy reach. The second reason I love it is that you've actually got some decent quality materials in here, which are great for the price point that this car sits at. So my seats are the same faux leather and fabric mixture that you get in the back. The center console is admittedly a hard plastic, but it feels pretty sturdy. And you've got a nice section of gloss black plastic here. I've got fake leather on the armrest in the center. I've got fake leather under my elbow rest in the door card. And yes, while this is all hard plastic, it doesn't feel cheap. It all feels really well screwed together as well. The steering wheel is fake leather and it's got some nice stitching around it. And these seats do also have some contrast stitching elements along them too. The third and final reason is the practicality and technology that this car brings. It is bringing the level of kind of practicality you'd expect to see from a car in a class above down to the level of Super Mini. So I've got a great big glove box. It isn't damped, but it is full width and a decent depth. I've got two cup holders here with a removable divider as well, so I can make that into a larger storage cubby or slide it over to make one cup holder larger and the other smaller. I've got a cubby down here which has a sliding cover and you can drop your phone in here if you wanted to. And then again, I've got a movable divider underneath as well. The armrest also lifts up so you can access the rear portion of this cubby. So the centre control stack has quite a lot of space in it. The door cards will also take a reusable bottle of water and these door card pockets themselves are pretty big. There's also a tray down here which is perfect for putting your phone in and you do have to use a cable to connect for Apple CarPlay or Android Auto but that is conveniently located in the form of a USB type A or USB type C port just above this tray. There's a 12 volt socket in the centre here as well for charging if you need that. There aren't too many buttons on this interior. You have a row of physical switches below the infotainment screen, and then you've got a selection of buttons on the steering wheel as well. Down here, you've got a quite premium feeling rotary shifter, which is a push in the middle for park. And then you've also got your electronic handbrake switch, auto hold and drive mode selector in the center. These buttons are shortcuts for your climate settings, front and rear demist, climate control on and off, home button for the infotainment system and then physical volume switches. On the left hand side of the steering wheel you've got your cruise control or MG pilot assisted driving function settings as well as voice control and your first favorite button. On the right I've got my phone digital dash cluster menu button and my second favorite button. The joystick on this side can be configured using these favorite buttons to allow you to adjust things like menus or climate control. So yes there aren't any physical climate controls in the center here other than a shortcut and on and off but you don't have to touch the screen to adjust the temperature because you can use a favorite button and then toggle temperature and fan speed up and down and left and right for me there is potentially just a little bit too much in the screen system but the screens are incredibly fast very sharp and the system itself is really easy to navigate around the digital dash cluster is great at showing you all the information you need as a driver and this whole cabin as well looks and feels far more premium than this car's price would suggest it should. The MG3 really seems to be bringing value for money in terms of its styling and interior. Let's see if it does the same when it comes to how it drives. First things first with the new MG3 Hybrid Plus, let's break down that Hybrid Plus powertrain. What you've got is a 1.5 litre normally aspirated four cylinder petrol engine under the front and 
a pretty beefy electric motor. And these combine together to give you a total power output of 194 PS and just over 300 Newton meters of torque, both of which are miles ahead of any of their closest competitors. If you look at something like a Toyota Yaris, the highest powered variant of that you can get is only 130 PS. So this has another 64 on top of that. What that means is that this car is actually pretty quick doing 0 to 62 miles an hour in eight seconds dead, which is a whole 1.7 to 1.9 seconds quicker than something like the Yaris. With all of that power, you would therefore hope that the chassis of the car can handle it. And I'm very pleased to report that yes, it can. The chassis in this is miles better than the outgoing MG3. And that's because it's no longer made of several house bricks kind of vaguely mortared together. This actually is capable of handling and it's pretty enjoyable when it comes to that as well. The steering does have a bit of a disconnected feel, but it does have a reasonable amount of weight behind it. So at least there's that going for it. There's enough communication to let you know vaguely where the wheels are pointing, but don't expect sports car handling here. If I use my drive mode selector in the center console to pop it into sport mode, it really does feel pretty sprightly. And that is because of the way this hybrid powertrain delivers the power. What you've actually got is the set off is always done purely in EV mode. Now this electric motor produces at its peak about 130 something PS, which is actually very powerful. The engine then comes in at higher speeds connected via a three speed conventional auto. It's a slightly odd choice from MG, but the powertrain really does work quite nicely. When you put your foot down, the engine note does come through, but under any other driving circumstances, it's incredibly quiet in this cabin. It's also very comfortable. The suspension is great at soaking up lumps and bumps in the road. And yes, it's relatively firm, but it's not uncomfortably so. It therefore has the added benefit of making the car handle quite well. With the base model being the SE coming in at around 18 and a half thousand pounds, you get a ridiculous amount of tech as standard. You get this large, lovely widescreen infotainment display, a large driver's instrument cluster that's digital, and you get full adaptive cruise control with MG's pilot system, which will recognize cars around you, auto steer for you on a motorway with your hands still on the wheel. And it's a really good system that is very good at keeping you safe. You've also got intelligent speed limit recognition and built-in sat-nav. If you stump up an extra £2,000, which takes you up to £20,495, you get this, which is the trophy specification. And that brings with it LED projector headlamps, keyless entry and go, and then also heated seats and a heated steering wheel in the front. This is all just a single stage of heating and it is unfortunately accessed through this center screen, but spending that extra 2000 pounds is in my opinion, a very worthy upgrade. And it still means that this car undercuts just about every single one of its closest competitors by a considerable margin. You might have more fun driving something like a Suzuki Swift because that is a little bit lighter and it's got a manual gearbox, but it does not offer anywhere near the same level of quality in the interior and technology. You also, as part of that trophy specification, get your 360 degree camera system, which is very good. Now, is it needed on a car this small? Probably not, but it's a nice thing to have. So we've covered cost, we've covered how it drives, we've covered performance, we've covered technology. You've got auto lights, auto wipers, your lane keep assist, traffic sign recognition, etc., etc. This car is fully loaded with technology. The only place this car suffers a little bit is economy. And that's purely because this is a very competitive segment and some of its rivals have got incredibly efficient powertrains. If you want the most efficient B segment hatchback, go and buy a Toyota Yaris. The eCVT system in that is ridiculously efficient. What you get here is a lot more power and understandably therefore a small drop in economy.
WLTP claimed efficiency for this is 64.2 miles per gallon and actually with careful driving that will be very achievable because the system is good it's just the Toyota Yaris will get you at least 70 miles to the gallon irrespective of how you drive it this system is at its most efficient around town and that's because you've got quite a large nearly two kilowatt hour hybrid battery pack and incredibly strong regenerative braking so this means that this car will actually go a reasonable distance in ev mode before the engine then kicks in i've got quite a heavy right foot and i've not struggled to see around 60 miles to the gallon in real world driving this week the other thing that's probably worth considering in that vein is that yes it's not as efficient as its rivals but it's significantly more powerful and with a purchase price that actually is a little bit lower than some of its closest rivals that kind of does go a way to offset that now finance deals for this are pretty good at the moment even on something like 7.9% APR, you're still only going to be paying around £250 a month with a two and a half grand deposit and 6,000 miles a year. So this is actually very good value even with a high APR rate and if you can get a deal it would absolutely be worth getting. That's just about enough for driving, let's go and conclude. Well the MG3 Hybrid Plus absolutely delivers when it comes to super mini style, practicality, performance and value. This car is ridiculous value for money when you consider all of the tech it comes with and the hybrid efficient powertrain that's also under the bonnet. It really is a hearty recommendation from me because I think this is the new leader in its class. Let me know in the comments if you agree or disagree with me on the new MG3. That is everything for today's video, so I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, and also there are a few ways you can support the channel. The first is all of our social media, which are linked in the description. Please go and follow us there. The second is also linked in the video description, which is our lovely spread shop, where you can go and buy some merch with Buckle Up or our logo on it. The third and final way is you can become a channel member directly here on YouTube and give us a small amount on a monthly basis to keep supporting what we do. Please also remember to like, comment, and subscribe to the Buckle Up YouTube channel if you have not done so already, and I will see you in the next one. Bye.